on this episode, we find out if going to the bathroom is fun or dangerous. Well, after looking at some of the interesting designs, I'm going to go with fun. Yeah, and after looking at some of the designs, uh, confusing you as to whether it's a refrigerator, confusing you as to whether it's a mine shaft, and standing up over the edge of a building and peeing down on people, I'm going to go with dangerous because I don't want these people getting confused and going in the wrong places. All right. Well, we find out what you do when an 8.5 million pound rock falls on a Colorado highway. Yeah, you give it a dumb name. No, no, no. But it does let me segue to an over-the-shoulder boulder holder and talk about them. Give up on my way. Oh, yeah. Welcome to What Happened in the World today. This is Steve. And this is Scott. And this is a tale of about bad life decisions led to a YouTube show and podcast. And we're going to talk about what we've noticed is going on in the world today. And what have we noticed that Scott's got all kinds of green behind him again? And well, it's not just green. If you look really close, all the yellow flowers on the... I'm trying to remember these are irises. The irises are blooming. Oh, yeah. I can't see them. Um, anyway. Iris, yellow right here. That's yeah, cut off. That's cut off. Okay, right right there's two little ones that are just Above open. Above your head. Yeah. So. Another one way up here. Above your head. Oh, yeah, Above look at all that one up there. Yeah, see, where did it go? Where did it go? There okay. it is. Move your hair down. There you go. Perfect. And I am at a fountain at Caesar's Palace. You are. You are. And what I really like is the compound bow. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everything is all marble and then there's a uh, black. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, so you know what's really, really cool? Is the bathrooms in Las Vegas? Yes. Are they cool or not? Well, they have one where there's girls on the wall looking down at, in, in the, at the urinals. Right. In the wall. <laughs> and snickering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But and there's he, a lot of those bathrooms around the world. There are some really cool things. I, I just came upon this accidentally, and because I came across the one, I decided to do research on more. It is amazing how cool some of these restaurant uh, restrooms are in different places. This one happens to be a restaurant in China right. where you literally pull open dual refrigerator doors. And step in. A, a Pepsi machine and what looks to be like the ice bin, and you urinate into the ice bin. How freaking cool is that? I would not want to eat in that restaurant in case people get confused and end up in the kitchen. That would be that would be bad. Well, the funniest part is it got a Pepsi logo at the top, so it's a Pepsi yeah. machine. Yeah, like I said, again, not eating in that bathroom because <laughs> they make a mistake, mm, kind of a problem. But, yeah, there's, there's a few that have won awards. There, there's one at uh, the Palmetto Brewery in South Carolina. Oh, it's so cool. The, uh, the urinals are kegs. Yes. They, they cut the kegs out and you pee into the keg. So that's kind of cool. They made it even more interesting. One of them has buck teeth and the other one sports vampire fangs. Oh, I see that. Yep. And you pee on the tongue so that it goes in the back of the throat, which is the drain. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Okay, I mean, a little, a little, a little uh, kinky, but pretty cool. Yeah. Some, some bathrooms in uh, Colorado. Um, Minturn. Minturn, just a couple hours west of Denver. Yep. They have uh, mine passageways. So you go into a mine passageway to pee. So like you go into the mines to pee. Again, yeah. don't want to be on the mine tour when the people make the mistake and go, well, we <laughs> peed on the last tour in the mine. So uh, right. kind of weird. And of course, you talked about our last show from our gentleman from uh, New Zealand. Um, yeah. There's one from New Zealand. It's, it's uh, what do they call it? They call uh, it a true. public toilet. They call it, they just got... I a rainbow of tile. Yeah, so just rainbow tile. I mean... And there's know. a living tree in the middle of it. Yeah. So for, for you know, you pretend your dog should be in a tree, right? Right. Um, now, now, this one I get a really big kick out of. Which one? The Lady Bird Lake Trail restroom in Texas. They got uh, men and women in the same one. <laughs> well, well, why not? Well, that's right. what it is in a lot of European countries. There is no yeah. men and women. You both go to the same well, one. Yeah, you just go in there one at a time. It's probably, this is probably a one-staller. Yeah. Well, there's another one in Switzerland, the Ooster Public Toilets. It has aluminum, bright. It's a bright green and yellow box out on the side of the road with aluminum um, panels all over, aluminum strips that, that, that shine 
because of the sun shining on them. That's kind of funny. Uh, apparently, it's supposed to look like a giant wrapped Christmas present, and uh, it, it shimmers depending on your angle and the sun's angle. Yeah, that's what I just said. Oh. Okay, it's another show where Scott's not listening to me. He's looking at it, the pictures, trying to figure it out. I'm going to skip the next one. I'm going right to the mirrored ones. I know. That's pretty cool. So there's a bathroom, like, just a bathroom out in the middle of the sidewalk, and it's mirrored around the whole outside. I wonder if you can walk right into it. I, I'll well, bet you. I really can walk into it. Right? I mean, so it's, it's outside of London's Tate Britain Museum. But oh, yeah, another one in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, the weird uh, the Kumutoto toilets. Yeah. I, I don't even understand those. When you climb it up. It looks like barnacles clinging to a boat. Yeah, the kind of weird one. But the ones in England are cool. In European cities and Amsterdam and London. They rise out of the sidewalk. Yes. So uh, I've got a question for you. How private is this? Is this like for peeing? Because I'm looking at it, it's the size of a manhole cover. So I'm guessing it's just a urinal. Oh, look at this. Um, the toilets can be found in numerous neighborhoods filled with pubs and bars that get busy at night and on weekends, but don't require a public toilet outside of those time frames. So after the business closed, these pop-up toilets pop up. Yeah, ah! I, think just, I think they're just urinals, though. And then I don't really see anything that, oh, that exciting, unless you go all the way down to Sloan's Ice Cream in Florida. There is a bathroom with a big glass panel looking into the bathroom. I don't know if I necessarily want to be on display, but they say, don't worry. Once the door is locked, it's one of those magnetic windows that go, Chook, and, uh, and you can't see through it anymore. Okay. I what if there's a power outage? Does that mean you're like sitting there on the toilet and all of a sudden the emergency light comes on and you're sitting there and, and everybody can see you? You didn't like the one in Taiwan? No. Oh, that's awesome. It's like you're, like you're underwater. Yeah, again. No. No. Didn't like it. Yeah, that ice cream one is cool. And then uh, Jungle Gyms in Ohio, the very last one. It's a grocery store, and inside the grocery store, not outside, they're in the middle of the store, porta potties. Right. Wait, <laughs> wait. Okay. But All no, right, actually, now. if you open the door and go in, it's a full fledged bathroom. It's not really. Yes, a it just looks like a porta potty yeah. on the outside. So, so that is pretty ingenious. So uh, all you have to do is type in uh, Google uh, best restrooms around the world and you will see what we're talking about. It is pretty funny. Some of these are really awesomely inspired. Yeah. So let's go on to our genuine positivity message since you're talking about toilet paper. Um, and this well, no, is we're talking about bathrooms. Oh, we're talking about, yeah, talking about bathrooms. And this is by Anonymous. Yes. I, 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 <laughs> You can see why somebody would not want their name credited with this throughout history. <laughs> but, but but it is a good. Uh, it, it, it really is. It's a great positive message. It is very apt. Okay. So just so you know, um, is that actually the phrase? Oh, no. Okay. I thought that was the phrase. But this is actually – some artwork that I, I – I always like to search up the phrases when Scott does these. Right. There is some, there's a Trent Austin design toilet paper roll from 1891. So just so you know that the way the toilet paper roll goes on is actually copywritten. Or is it a patent? I don't remember. But there's a drawing, and it shows the toilet paper goes over the top, just so you guys know. But this thing is a freaking $100. Yes. For this print. But anybody who has cats will know that it's better to have it coming from the bottom instead of the top. Because if it's from the top, the cats they'll, don't unroll it. they'll unroll the whole thing by going like this. If it goes the other way, it, they can go this all the way and it just stays together. So that's it. So I know that people who do it the other way have cats. That's More right. than likely. All right. So tell me our positivity message pertaining to toilet paper. No, pertaining to bathrooms. Okay, pertaining to bathrooms. May your life be like a roll of toilet paper, long and useful. Like I said, pertaining to toilet paper. Wow. 
Okay. Going back, hey. going back to that thing. Hey. Now, we both been through part. Colorado. You lived there for quite a while. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, the funny part is this was between Cortez and um, – having a brain fart. Denver. Yeah, Denver. which was – I mean, what is it, 20 miles away from where you were? What? When you were in Colorado, weren't you like 20 miles away? hour drive between Denver and Cortez. They're on opposite Denver, ends of the – in- Cortez. In- yeah. Yeah. This was in Cortez. Well, it's in Telluride. And Telluride is actually north of Cortez. So, so to get to, to, to Denver, you didn't go through Telluride. You went through Durango. But if I went north, I would go to Telluride. And okay. I didn't drive that road that often. All right. Yeah, it just says, yeah, okay. So I thought it was really close to Cortez. It, well, Okay. Um, In the grand scheme of things, I guess it is close, but it's not as close as yeah. I thought. Well, but, no. I mean, but it's okay. So between Telluride and Cortez, I think it's only a three-hour drive going around because you got to go around. You can't go straight over. It's right. only it, it is only like twenty-four miles or thirty-six miles or something like that as the crow flies. Right. But you can't go that way. You got to go no. around. Yes. Mountain. Unless you take a helicopter. Coming around the mountain when she comes. Right. She goes. Yeah. So this giant boulder fell onto the highway and wrecked Actually, the highway. two of them did. They got rid of the smaller one, but they left the big one. Okay. The big one is a 8.5 million pound boulder. <laughs> 8.5 million pounds. You, you got to look this up, folks. This boulder hit the road so far, so hard, it embedded itself in the road probably 10 feet and just, it, it's just impressive. Yeah, and it flexed the road. I mean, it, it flexed the road. <laughs> oh, so, cool. So, so here's the best part. To remove the boulder, it would cost $200,000 to blow it up and haul it away. Uh, yeah. So they decided that it would be cheaper to build the road around it. Which is not true, but that's okay. It's only cheaper for a certain reason, which we'll get to in a moment. Guess how much it actually costs to put the road around it? Well, fixing the whole thing is going to cost $1.3 million. Right. So what they decided to do is, but that money comes from the feds. So that's why it ends up being cheaper. It's federal. Well, this is an additional. They still have to spend an additional $200,000. Right. They still got to repair the road, which costs a lot of money. Correct. But not only that, by building the road around it, they now have another tourist attraction. Yep. Because yes, they, they even did. named the boulder. Yeah, and they came up with such an original name. Could you please tell us all what the <laughs> rock is called? You know, this is something that I got a, a really big kick out of. It's the <clears throat> Memorial Rock. <laughs> memorial of what? That it fell? <laughs> no, this it's is, Memorial that it fell and didn't kill anybody. This is, this is a, it's a Memorial Rock. But the second boulder... Was only they, they renamed the highway that too, Memorial Rock. Rock Highway. So this is a Memorial Rock on Memorial Rock Highway. Sure. That has nothing to do with Memorial 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 Day. It's just crazy. Yeah. But yeah, can, the small boulder was, was 2.3 million pounds, which is still big. But they did remove that one with explosives. Yeah. You know, and when you look at the picture, the thing is big as a lot of people's houses. Well, yeah. That's a big-ass boulder. The, the smaller rock was 2.3 million pounds. Yeah. See, now you're not listening because I said the that twice. Smaller rock. No, I know you said it. I am listening to you. I'm just I'm uh, emphasizing sure, the smaller yeah, rock. No, yeah. I wasn't saying that you didn't say it. I was agreeing with you that the smaller rock. I just want everybody to realize that the small rock was 2.3 million pounds. That was the small one. Now – the, Here's thing. the the Enterprise Bar and Grill, which is up the canyon from the Rock in Rico, um, they they got a kick out of it. They're supposed to have a Memorial Day parade with motorcycles. Right. They had to cancel it because you could it could get too far around. Because as you mentioned earlier, there's no direct straight lines to right. pretty much anywhere in the mountains. You got to go right. around right. every yeah. hours. I, I, I do love that he was very punny. We lost a ton of business. <laughs> okay, okay. 
a ton is only 2,000 pounds. Yes. They lost more than a ton of business. So it should have been, we lost tons of business. Yeah. Pretty funny, but stupid. But now here's something actually pretty impressive because you what? and I, for, as drivers, know that usually construction takes forever. They figured this is going to be fixed by the 4th of July. Well, they did that here. Remember when the uh, expressway washed away from the rain uh, between here and Mesquite? They fixed right. that really quick also. Yeah. When they have to, they can make stuff happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I have one more story here. Okay. But it's not a story. It's not? It's what our phrase it? origin story and story. Oh, yes. So... And it even includes Bette Midler. Okay, so what does Bette Midler have to do with Otto Titzlinger? Well, <laughs> Get it, Titzlinger? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I would assume you remember um, her song. Um, I the, don't. That's why I'm asking. Oh. <laughs> so, so let's tie this all together. We've got Bette Midler. We've got Otto Titzlinger, the inventor of the Brazier and our phrase origin story, which is the over-the-shoulder boulder holder, which ties into our, what kind of brassiere would Otto have had to invent to hold back a, uh, how, <laughs> how heavy was that rock? 18 eight, eight, eight million, point million, pound, million pound, tons. 8.5 8. million pounds. Yeah. 8.5 million pound boulder holder. <laughs> okay. so, which, of course, for those folks who are not paying attention, it means a bra, but I'm technically a larger bra. bra. Right, so Otto Titzlinger. I mean, of course, Titzlinger, you know, you. Yep. Oh, uh, Titzlinger. Which is funny because that's his real name. Titzling, not Titzlinger. Titzling. Well, yes. Oh, okay. So, no, Otto Titzling is the lyrics by Bette Midler. Ah, so there's the Bette Midler. Yes. Okay, so. But the, anyways, the, the story goes Bette. Titzling, a German immigrant living in New York City circa 1912, was employed in a factory making women's undergarments when he met an aspiring opera singer named Swanhilda Olvesen, who uh, <clears throat> was rather largely endowed and complained that the standard corsets that they used at the time were not only uncomfortable to wear, but failed to provide adequate support, especially, you know, <laughs> where it counted the most. Uh, she was buxom. They call yes, that buxom. The word, yes. So... But he originally called it the chest halter. Um, okay. But he made a big boo-boo and neglected to take out the patent, and Philip de Brazier um, managed to take steal out the funder. Sued for the – Titzling sued Brazier. <laughs> Titzling sued Brazier for the patent. Yeah. For, and in court, the battle lasted four years. The two men fought to prove ownership of the concept. Face off – in a climactic courtroom fashion show. <laughs> like, okay, judge, here's my model. Oh, judge, yeah. here's my model. Uh, no, just no. lost the case. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I thought that was uh, a good phrase origin story to end our show. So, well, well, okay. But you never told us how it got to be an over-the-shoulder boulder holder. We talked about the origin of the brassiere. We uh, talked about the, well, the fist singer, but you never told us how it became a over-the-shoulder boulder holder. The, the, the. All so right. If, got, if you're going to use that as our phrase origin story, please tell us, how did it become the over-the-shoulder boulder holder? Or is this going to be another one where you just thought it was so funny, you want to talk about bras, and didn't really even care that there was no information there? Well, basically, it all arranges to the slang term as boulders being large breasts. What? Why? Because what? people That's make slang words up all the time. So you don't, you didn't really look up. You, you saw Boulder, which tied to our last, and you knew you could talk about bras. And that would, that's it, right? Pretty much. Well, no, that's, yeah, sort of. That's where it went. <laughs> really? 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 Hang in there. You're killing me, right? Why? You need the no 
no forethought, no apology to the fans, no apology to our now, audience. Now, first of all, everybody's heard that term before. Everybody. Where, I mean, where did it come from? When I, who? Somebody made it up. It doesn't who say. Cares? Who, who did cares? Did you find it? Uh, well, I wasn't. I didn't bring it up. I always have all the information when I bring it up. Yes, but you always comment that when I come up with something, you always start checking things out. Well, you always check things out when I find stuff. That's true. It's why we do what we do, because it's more fun. So, but uh, anyways, uh, I, don't I remember when I, was, when I was in Boy Scouts, that was the big funny joke, you know, well, I'm going to size that over the shoulder, boulder holder. Um, I can't find it. See? I can't find it well, okay, we, I have like 30 seconds. So homework for everybody, find out what the origin is and um, put it in a comment. So uh, go to whathappened.world, and I'm going to say thank you for watching. Go to whathappened.world. And if you feel our show is not a bad life decision. Tell us where uh, the over-the-shoulder boulder holder came from. Yeah, it just says it's uh, slang and humorous. Slang and humorous. That's all. That's oh, some, some comedian said it first. There you go crazy but go connect up to uh facebook instagram if you're listening to our podcast go to our youtube so you can see what we look like uh there are no pictures of older shoulder boulder holders uh on there unfortunately um uh, but i'm sure while you're on the web looking at our stuff you can just search that and find that's right pictures uh so i want you to live every day and we'll see you on the next show be genuinely positive live and love life and have a good day. Hey, 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 don't you step amazing. Uh,